So welcome to this walkthrough of Frame VR. So it's a super powerful web-based virtual reality um, kind of building environment. And I'm gonna walk you through the whole process and start to determine how we might be able to use this as like a virtual setting for uh, remote learning or even gathering students into a virtual classroom. So let's take a look. So when we land here for the first time, it will bring you to this kind of demo space. And you can create your own Frame VR account. And I made my account and I'm logged in. So up here in the top right-hand corner, we can open up this menu. Now at this point, when you create your frames, you can have up to three free frames in your free account. So you can see here that I have a demo room that I've built and then my virtual classroom. So you can just simply create a new frame and once you've done that, you'll be up and running. Now I'm gonna jump into my virtual classroom frame right now. So you can see once you set your room up, there's a link to join your room. You can even decide what the environment is like. So by default, you will land on this small gallery environment, but what you can always do is change it to a larger team suite or a larger gallery if you want to. So those are all the environments that we have available right now. Now, something important to keep in mind, just when you're setting your room up for the first time, is who do you want to be able to edit this? So you might wanna change this from anyone to edit to only you, and then viewing permissions. If you're kind of just building it and you want it to be private, you can toggle that over to only you can view or anyone can view. So once that's all set, I'm just gonna click on the link to jump into my room. So here's the frame that I've built. And once it gets up and running, we're going to be able to customize and add elements. And I'll go through a little walkthrough of the setup and then even join the frame with a second device. So you can see what that's like when there's another user in the room. So I'm on my laptop right now and I'm just clicking and dragging to kind of navigate my view in the room. If you'll notice down below, you have this kind of floating toolbar. And if you open that up just by clicking on it, you can see the options that are built in. So my mic is on by default. I can click to turn that off. I can turn on my laser pointer. So now click on my toolbar. Anywhere that I look, I can indicate to other users in the room what I'm looking at or what I'm pointing to. So I'll tap back on my toolbar, turn the laser pointer off. Now this option here is super important. When you're building the room and you go into editing mode, this option here will allow you to um, move the location of your assets that you add, the size of your assets, and any kind of content that you add into the room. So I'm going to go into editing, editing mode right now. I'll close my toolbar out. And now if I'd like to add anything into the room, I can access all of that by this option over here in my overflow menu. So now in my inventory, I can start to add content that's eventually going to be added into this room. So you can see here, I can add an image, a 360 photo. The 360 photos have to be equirectangular, which means the length is twice the height. And you can take those with a smartphone using like Google Street View or with their 360 camera. We can add a PDF and I could populate the walls with PDF documents that we might read with our students add video, and then a 3D model as well. So what I'm gonna do now is add a few assets um, and then get them into my room. So I'll start with a PDF. I'm going to browse my files and find the document that I would like. So there, I found the PDF that was already saved to my desktop. And now I'm using my arrow keys just to walk forward because I'd like to put that PDF on the wall here. So I'll jump into my frame and in this frame that I'm working on right now, I'd like to add that asset to this frame and I'll do that. So I'll go back into my inventory. Here's the PDF that I just uploaded and you can see letter from a Birmingham jail for my history course and I'll tap the plus sign and now that file gets added. So when I'm in editing mode, that's going to allow me to change the location of the PDF. So you can see here, if I want that on the wall in the back, as I walk by that PDF, it's not on the wall right now. However, like I showed earlier, if I'm in editing mode, let me just close that out. If I look at my tool and I'm in editing mode, so I'll go here, I'm in edit mode. That will allow me to change the location of the PDF, change the size, and change the rotation. So I'm clicking on the PDF, holding it down, and just walking forward right now. And I'll keep walking forward until I don't want it to be through the wall. I want it right on the wall. Then I'll click on this again, and notice I can change the scale of the document and the rotation of the document. 
So I'm just going to click and pull that back out a little bit, make that a little bit bigger, pull that out. There we go. So now I'll close out my editing tool and I'll back up. And now we have this document that's been added to the scene here. So now that that file has been added, this is an asset that I could have my students explore with me. We could have a discussion around this document. And because it's multiple pages, we can even cycle through the document. Now, something to keep in mind is that in my room right now, let me back out to my frames and in this frame, I'm in editing mode of this frame right now. You can see on the top, the frames that I'm in, I'm in this frame that I'm building and I'm in edit mode. So when I'm done setting this whole room up, I'd obviously want to pull this out of edit mode. And that would allow me to cycle through and read this document with my students. You can see here, it's cycling through page by page because once I set it up, I don't want any changes to be made. So what we can also do, I'll go to another wall over here and possibly I'm building a gallery of resources that I want my students to explore. And I'll go through that process as well of adding an image. So I'm on another wall in the room. I'll go to the triple lines, get into my inventory, and now I can add an image if I'd like to. So simply add my assets. I can go to the camera and take a front facing picture. There's also an embedded Google search. So I'm going to search for a painting that I'd like to add to the wall. So there's my painting. I'd like to add that and just give it a moment. And now you can see under my inventory, my last supper has been added and I will simply add that. Now that needs to have some serious editing done. So I'm going to toggle back into edit mode, tap on that asset. And now I need to do some rotation. I need to make that much bigger. I want that to fill up the whole space. And then I'm going to grab this and just arrow forward until it goes through the wall. There we go. So I'll close that out, close out my sidebar. I'm walking backwards right now and that looks good. Now I'd like to actually make that a little bit bigger to fit the entire wall. There we go. So now we have in our virtual space, let's back up this way a little bit. We have the reading that I'd like my students to explore. We have the painting that we put on the wall that we're going to talk about. And this is where using the laser pointer could be really helpful. So if I turn on the laser pointer and I'm conducting class, I can easily kind of direct students to certain parts of this painting that we'd like to discuss or analyze. So I'll look back down and just turn that tool off. So the laser is off. Now, another feature that I really like, let's look over here in the room, is this kind of live feed. And notice what we can do here. We can share our camera. It will turn on my front facing camera and we can even share our screen. So now we could have students congregating in this virtual room and we'd be able to kind of present ourselves in the room as if we're there on like a flat screen in this virtual space. So I'm going to share my camera right now. It's going to connect and turn on the front facing camera. And there we go. So now the students can see me live in the room while they're kind of engaged in a discussion. And then to turn this off, I can simply click on the X and now that's been dismantled. So also, if you'll notice down below, we're in scene one. So if I go to the up menu here, notice untitled, I'll call this um, landing space one, right? And now I can create new scenes. So what that allows me to do, I'll call this space two. What that allows me to do within my scene is to kind of toggle through. So I'm on scene two. I'll go back to scene one and let's look over here. You can see that my assets are there, but if we cycle the scene two, the assets aren't there. So we could have multiple galleries or multiple spaces that we've built and students could even congregate in different scenes to discuss different ideas. Other kind of things going on just to manage this. There is a chat that's embedded in frame and then we can always see how many users are in the room and if their microphone is on or off. And because I control this, I have the ability to mute other users when they're in the room. Now let's get a second device in the room so you can see what it's like when there's multiple users here. So I'm gonna turn off edit mode. I'll turn off my mic in this room so we don't get any feedback and I'll go into my frames again. Now this is the frame that I'd like my guests to be able to visit. I can share that link in any way that I get links out to my students. Now I want to make sure I'm the only editor and anyone can get into the room. If you wanted to have something a little more private, 
you could always add members to your room and then it's kind of like sharing this room specifically with one user. So give me a second, I'll get my second device logged in and then you can see what the interaction is like. All right, so now we have our second user in the room and you can see from the owner side of this on the laptop here, I can see the two users are online. There's an anonymous user. I can bump that user out and mute their microphone. I'll just mute the mic so there's no feedback going on during the video. And now on my iPad, I have the ability to walk around and what I'm doing is just using the touch screen and then I have the ability to change my view. So on the iPad view, there's two different um, kind of tools right on the screen here. So I'm just gonna walk forward a little bit, turn over here, and maybe my teacher's telling me that we'd like to examine the Last Supper together. So we're looking at that painting. Now my teacher view, I'm going to walk over here as well. Connect with my student over here, who's looking at the Last Supper, and I'm gonna examine this with them. So I think what's really interesting now is if I turn on my tools, I'll turn on my laser pointer, hide that tool menu, and now as I'm pointing to different elements on the screen, you'll notice I can point at an element on the screen, and then my guest, the student in the room, can see exactly what I'm pointing at. Now the student, I'll turn over here and look at my teacher. There's my teacher, or my teacher's providing some instruction for me. So I really think there is a ton of potential for thinking about using uh, virtual reality and virtual spaces to kind of pull students together in this remote learning environment. You know, it can be challenging to just keep doing this kind of flat screen video calling, and it could be really nice to see how the dynamic shifts and what kind of interaction we can generate in a virtual environment. So good luck getting started with Frame VR in your virtual classroom.